My name is Sergeant Patricia Grant with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office of Marine Unit. We are joined here today by several law enforcement partners to announce, as we do every year at the start of voting season, an amplified enforcement activity taking place in the next few months um, on our waterways to protect the manatees and to stress the importance of safe voting. I would like to begin first by thanking Jim Suber, the city's dock master, and our representative from the mayor's office for being here today. Thank you, Jim. Also joining us this morning is Dr. Quentin White of the Jacksonville University, a respected biologist and marine scientist, and a great advocate of our beautiful waterways. Before we begin the enforcement action, before I explain the enforcement action, I would like to introduce all law enforcement partners in this activity. First, we have the United States Coast Guard uh, representing, being represented by Chief ME2 Bobby Hitchcock, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Lieutenant John Convoy and Paul Arkins. Also joining us from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is marine biologist Nadia Gordon, and from the Sea and Shore Alliance is Zach Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacksonville is the River City, and with approximately 30,000 registered voters in this county and thousands more visiting our area and using our waterways, protecting this great asset is part of protecting our quality of life. As many of you know, Jacksonville is a, has a large population of manatees, and we want to be extremely careful to make sure that they are not injured or killed. These endangered species are easy to spot if waterway speed limits are obeyed. With a little caution and low speed, boaters can avoid striking and possibly killing these endangered creatures. Last year in 2013, there were four manatee deaths in Jacksonville's waters caused by watercraft. These numbers remain consistent with the manatee death in 2012, which were also a total of four watercraft-related deaths. The Jacksonville Marine Unit continues to educate the public in an effort to keep the numbers down. These numbers are still down from 2011, where there were six manatee deaths, and down from 2009, where there were 14 manatee deaths in Jacksonville waters, eight of those caused um, by watercraft. We, re we view our um, waterway as a great regional asset and appreciate the opportunity to enforce the law without borders and working with these trusted partners. Um, some of these law enforcement agencies' vessels are clearly marked and others are not, but you will see them as they approach you on the waters with their lights and sirens. We'll be out enforcing the slow speed zones, the manatee zones, and of course all applicable laws such as voting under the influence. Federal fines range from $125 to $25,000 and or six month imprisonment under the Endangered Species Act. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service is the principal federal agency responsible for this protection um, enforcement activity. Can we have some pamphlets to share with the media representatives here today? And we ask that you take these back to your stations and post them to your website. Um, also, the press release you have included some links to these maps and important information. Um, our, our website, www.jacksheriff.org, will have a manatee enforcement page up today with the same information. Some additional factors you may be interested in, um, Duval County has approximately 125 square miles of waterway. Our education and enforcement efforts will take place throughout the waterway, including the Intercoastal and Sisters Creek. In 2013, there were six joint manatee protection deployments with JSO Marine Unit, um, FWC, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Coast Guard. In addition to the joint efforts with our partners, our Marine Unit also conducted 100 manatee protection deployments on its own. This was an increase from 2012 in an effort to ensure that the public is continuously reminded of the manatee slow zones. Okay, now I would like to invite Lieutenant Convoy from the Fish, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission up to say a couple of words. Thank you for coming. Each year, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the United States Coast Guard, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service work together to help protect manatees in our area. As the new, as the weather increases in temperature, the water temperature increases, more and more manatees are moving into our areas. At the same time, we've got the peak boating season starting, and it increases the possibility of collisions between manatees and vessels. 
that's why we take this time of the year to increase our efforts to focus on increasing awareness about the manatees in our area, increase education as far as the manatee zones that we have, and also to increase our efforts to enforce these manatee zones. These zones were put in effect to help protect these manatees from collisions with vessels. We ask that boaters review the zones, review the pamphlets that we have, and be aware that the manatees are returning to the area, keep up their knowledge on the manatee zones and the speed zones that are in effect. We recommend that boaters wear polarized sunglasses while they're out operating on the boat so they can see manatees a little bit better in the water and be aware of signs of manatees, any swirls or manatee activity in their area. And we ask that if you do see manatees while you're out operating your boats, please slow down. Thank you. Now we're going to ask Nadia Gordon to come up and speak. Thank you. Well, we're all here because manatees are on their way back to Duval. We already have plenty here in the area. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit about manatee behavior and who to call if you see an animal injured or in distress. So manatees, large herbivores, 9 to 10 feet in length, weighing over 1,000 pounds, typically found in water that is less than 30 feet and feeding on their seagrasses. But that doesn't mean that we don't see them in deep channels and waterways. You will find them in the deeper water. Now when you see a manatee, it might be a nose, it might be the back briefly, the tail, or the swirls in the water, the footprints we call them. But when you see a manatee that is injured or dead, we ask that you call FWC's 24-7 hotline, and that is 1-888-404-FWCC or 3922. When you call the hotline, you will speak with the dispatcher who will collect all the information, alert a biologist, and a bio biologist will directly contact you and speak with you, get information, and if needed, respond to the scene. So again, the FWC hotline is available 24-7 for individuals to call. Now we do have some specialized equipment that we utilize when responding to marine mammals. This includes a 24-foot modified mullet skiff to enter the water, rescue a manatee, bring it to a boat ramp where we do have an E450 rescue truck fully equipped with necessary equipment to bring an animal to one of the three critical care facilities in the state of Florida. Now the closest for us in Duval is Orlando, two and a half hours away. But I will say, share a secret with you that the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens is working to build manatee critical care, and we hope to have that open next year. We shall see. But that will make it much easier on the manatees and the staff of the Duval area. So we're very excited about that. Now, dead animals. So again, the hotline is good for dead or live marine mammals. Give us a call. Every dead animal we do collect, if a manatee is fresh dead or has any watercraft wounds, we will take it to our marine mammal pathobiology lab that is located in St. Petersburg, where our vet is located. Otherwise, carcasses that are not as fresh, we do keep here in Jacksonville and again, will perform a full necropsy and collect samples. So again, please call the hotline. Now, one thing I want to finish up with is just manatee behavior. This time of year, we do get a lot of calls on manatees because they are coming back in large numbers. Some of the behaviors you see are logging, we call it, or surface resting. So manatees will breathe every two to three minutes. They can hold their breath for 20 minutes, and they sometimes sun themselves for several hours. We get them called in as dead sometimes when they're just sunning themselves. So if you have any questions, again, call the hotline. And another behavior that's common this time of year is mating herds. So you may have two, or you may have over 20 manatees all together, a lot of commotion, it draws a lot of attention, but again, it's typically a mating herd. We ask individuals to look for signs of watercraft injury, which can be pink, bleeding wounds, injuries, scars are typically white, but keep in mind that with watercraft damage or injury or impact, it may not always have external signs, so it can all be internal. So they may look fine, but they could have internal injuries. So again, we ask that you call the hotline. And today we brought with us some artifacts on manatees that you can take a look at. And we also have a manatee tag with us today. If an animal is entangled, we ask individuals not to intervene because they want to help but could inadvertently pop off the buoy. So just call the hotline, we will respond. And keep an eye out for tagged manatees, which will show a tag here. 
shortly because we do track the manatees such as Sea to Shore Alliance, FWC, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will track them. Maybe this is an animal that was injured and has been released to see how it's doing in the wild to track it. So if you do see a tagged animal, you can call the hotline as well. So thank you. We do have stickers with the hotline number and brochures for individuals that you would like. Thanks. All right, next we're going to have Dr. Quentin White from Jacksonville University. Thank you very much, Sergeant, and thank you all for coming. Uh, this is a, sort of an interesting, exciting time of the year. We've been tracking manatees at JU for almost 20 years now. And your chance of ha having a manatee encounter is greater today than it was 20 years ago because of the success we've had in increasing the population. So as other speakers have already said, you want to be alert when in the water. I've never met anybody who wanted to hurt a manatee. You want to watch for the swirl, watch for the presence of manatees. Most likely you're going to see it in shallow water where, when you're around grass beds. And so if you're wearing polarized glasses, it helps to avoid the glare and you can see what's going on. So slow down in manatee zones, watch what's going on. If you've got a smartphone, there's actually a manatee app that you can get that will alert you to where the zone is and what the speed is. And so you can download that to look at what's going on. Um, encourage people when they see a manatee, if it looks like it's in danger, has been entangled or is injured, call the manatee hotline. Do not try to do it yourself. We've had some problems with people trying to help the animals. These are very powerful animals and you might in fact get hurt. So respect the fact that they're wild animals. Encourage you don't do things if you're on the water to attract them like putting out fresh water or feeding them lettuce. That attracts manatees to people and that makes for problems. So enjoy the manatee, watch what's going on around you, be alert, pay attention, and we'll all enjoy the water better. So thank you very much. And next we're gonna have Zach Johnson from Sea to Shore Alliance. Good morning everyone. Uh, Zach Johnson, Sea to Shore Alliance. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about the uh, actual tags that we use to track rehabilitated and research animals. Uh, we ask that if you see uh, one of these tags in the water that you please uh, do not mess with it, leave it alone. Uh, chances are it's attached to either a research animal or a rehabilitated animal uh, that we spend a lot of time and energy uh, keeping track of. Um, the tag works as a satellite GPS tag as well as a VHF and sonic committing tag as well uh, to give us multiple ways to relocate an animal. Um, Beyond that, uh, the only thing we would ask is that you please make sure to maintain, as they said, the slow speed zones in the manatee areas and try to stick to the main channels and waterways as manatees do tend to favor shallow waters on the edges of the waterways. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I think now we're going to take the um, reporters and the camera persons out on the vessels um, to give them an idea of the public education and enforcement initiative that will be going on. So I thank everybody for coming and participating and um, we will be happy to answer any questions if you guys have any. Okay. Thank you.